So what we were doing with this is we said, okay, we decide whether or not you have discontinuities. It was all about whether there was a variable denominator or a piecewise function. And we talked about if there was a variable in the denominator, set that equal to zero and solve. Don't worry about imaginary numbers because we're only graphing a real number line, so that's not going to affect you. Be careful if remains be an asymptote. That is infinite discontinuity. Whereas if it cancels out up here, that's a little different. That's double discontinuity. And you need to figure out what the point is by putting it in back to the simplified version of the equation. Here we still have an infinite asymptote. Yes, ma'am? Why is one continuous even though x still equals something? Because this is an imaginary number. We're continuous along the real numbers. Because we're only graphing it for the real numbers. The imaginary numbers don't really bother us. Okay? Okay, and then for the last one, when you have piecewise functions, basically we're going to plug that in to that equation, plug that into that equation. Since these two numbers match and one of them has an or equal to sign, the output, if the y values are the same, it's still continuous. If the y values are different, it's jump. Okay? Uh, we talked about n behavior, and we said n behavior is all about the highest power on your x. And look in front of it. If the number in front of it is negative, it's going down. If the number in front of it is positive, it's going up. Even if it's start and end doing the same thing, start and end doing the opposite. And since absolute value is very similar to standard, like a V versus a U, we can pretend the value sign is with a squared up. Okay, so that's what we were doing. Now today, we're actually still kind of focusing on 1, 2, and 3 graphing those. That's the whole goal for today is graphing. And it's actually what you for the most part done before. You did it when you were in Algebra 2. Okay? The problem with this is you've got to be very, very, very careful because there are so many rules to remember. So take a look at all of these rules. Yikes. Right? A lot of rules. Well, one can be very quickly ever want to do is factor the numerator and the denominator. Absolutely have to factor. Once you have that done, everything cancels out. It is a whole. And don't forget, we always substitute it back in simplified And that's going to give you Your whole is a point. Now, if it cancels, it's a If it means, it's a vertical asymptote. And that stuff's pretty explanatory. We had all of that last class. Today, we're going to be talking about this third, which is all about horizontal asymptotes and something we call slant asymptotes. Horizontal asymptote. You need to memorize these steps. There's no way around it. Memorization. Okay. Horizontal. Asymptote, it's all about the degree of the numerator, the degree of the denominator. The degree of the numerator is actually less than the denominator. That would look something like maybe this. And I'm just going to give you an example. I said x squared minus 4, or x cubed plus 2x minus 3. So let's say that was my equation. The degree of the top is what? What degree? Highest power on x? 2. Degree of the denominator? 3. The degree of the top is less than the degree of the then our horizontal asymptote, we simply say equals zero. Always in front of the top is the degree of the denominator. Your horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals zero. Okay, that's the first thing to memorize. 
Now, if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, now it's like if I squared minus 4 over squared minus 3. Well, here, let's even go crazy. If the degrees are the same, you see what degrees on the top? It's not a tricky, it's easy. Look at what's the degree in the bottom? When the degrees are the same, you are just going to take coefficients terms. So you're going to say my asymptote is going to be at y equals, because their lines always has to be y equals thirds. Top number over bottom number. This is where the tricky part comes in. If the degree of denominator is the denominator plus one, so it's one more. So that's like saying three x cubed plus minus five over squared minus x plus four. So if the degree of the top is exactly one more than the degree of the bottom. We have what's called a slant asymptote. And you find it by dividing. All right. Now, I kind of have a feeling that what you do today, the division is the hardest part because you've forgotten how to do it. Can you remember how to divide polynomials? There's synthetic division options. <laughs> so it doesn't sound like it's something you're very thrilled about, but you're going to pick whichever method you want. I'm not going to say you have to do synthetic division. I'm not going to say you have long division. Right. But when you meet those requirements for synthetic, it will a lot faster. So what I'm going to do is actually going to step away from what we're doing in class and just quick review on, you guys okay with that? So one paper, I had some pro problems, yo. Oh, thank you guy, I appreciate you. So we're going to start with a problem that is not too crazy. And I'm going to show you this in both methods. So if I give you, let's start with 12x squared plus 12 minus 29. And I'm going to divide that by x plus. Okay, I think I'm going to start here with long division. Because long division is pretty much the same whether you're talking about numbers or polynomials. So, let's see here. I'm going to set up my symbol. Which here, top or bottom? Top. top. No, in the box. In the box is top, right is the bottom. So I'm going to say x on the outside. I'm going to have 12x squared. 12x minus 29. Now you want to be real careful. If you're missing, like if you had x squared, 12x squared minus 29, you have to put a placeholder in if you're missing. It's got to go squared x, no x. Cubed x squared x, no x. You have a placeholder. Be very careful about that. Now it's just like regular division, but I actually think that this is even easier because all you're going to do is you're going to look at that first term and this guy. What do I need to multiply x by to get 12x squared? 12x. Find that over the other x, just x not squared, so I'm going to say 12x. It's just a dink that we have this here, so don't freak out. It's not always going to be the same way. And then I'm going to multiply. What is 12x times 12x times positive 
Okay? Now, this was your old arithmetic. What would you do with this and this? Minus. So I'm just going to change the signs on everything. So what is 12x squared minus 12x? Zero. What is 12x minus 24x? Negative 12x. And drop down that negative 29. And we're just going to repeat the process until we run out of room on my bar. So I'm going to say, okay, from x to negative 12x, what do I need? Negative 12. I want the same number. So negative 12 times x is negative 12x. 12 times 2, positive or negative? Negative 4. Now this is why I like to think, not just subtract, but actually change the signs. Because then this is going to become plus, and this becomes plus. So negative 12x plus 12x gives me? Zero. Negative 29 plus 24. Negative 5. And when you're doing long or synthetic division, if you have a remainder, there's nothing else to pull out, you're going to take that number over what you're dividing by. So that's your answer. Now, that asymptote would be that. We would get to ignore the remainder, and the slant asymptote would just be that. Okay. Please remember you have an option of synthetic division when your denominator is less. That means the highest power on x is 1. So then you're going to say find your 0. What makes Denominator is zero. If I were to solve that equal to zero, x equals negative. Two. So to do some division, kind of like upside down division, we're going to put our zero front, and we're just going to list our coefficients across. Twelve. Twelve. Negative 29. Remembering that if you need a placeholder, if you're missing a piece, put it in there. And under the constant, I'm going to put a little box where so my remainder is going to go. Now, I love synthetic division. It's freaking awesome. Remember how to do this? Anybody? It's going, no, not at all. Drop it. That is hot. Times negative times twelve. Add twelve times add. And the way this goes is that last number is your remainder. Then you have your constant. Then you have your x term. Oh! Same exact thing. Ba boom. Remember how to do division? It's definitely easier. I remember it. Okay. Let's at least set up another problem. Uh, something where you can still do both. It might be a little bit trickier, so let's pick some crazy numbers here. Do I want to go up to the fifth? I don't know if I want to go up to the fifth. Ah, there's a fourth. Okay. So we'll do 16x to the fourth plus 28x to the third plus 26x squared plus 20x plus 5, and I'm going to divide that guy by 4x plus 2. Up. 
sick brrrr. She's like, I'm not asleep. Yeah. All right, work through this. No, now. Let's just go ahead and pop this after lunch. And we're just going to work it through. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Rebecca, sister, right now. All right. So we're going to do this both ways again. Start with long division, and then we're going to do synthetic. So if I'm going to do this with long division, again, I have my bar. Top or bottom? Which one goes here? Um, 4x plus 2. 4x plus 2. Bottom. And everything else goes underneath. Yeah, we're not around. Easy big numbers. And just like before, we're going to take this the same way. We want to Looking at just the first, what do I need to multiply 4x by to get 6x to the 4? 4x cubed. So look at the cube one, and I'm going to line it up right there. Say 4x cubed here. Now I just multiply. 4x cubed by 4x. What's that give me? 4x squared. 4x cubed times 2. 4x and 4. 4x cubed times 2. Come on, guys. That's not hard. 8x cubed. All right. But we need to change our signs because we're subtracting whatever we have. Wait. Okay. So that means I'm going to have 0 here. 28x cubed, 8x cubed. Oh, yes. <laughs> one. <laughs> Not one that's supposed to be chopping. Okay. So then I'm going to drop down the 26. X squared. And look at the first terms again. 4 to 20x cubed. What do I need? 4x to 20x cubed. 5 x squared. So then I multiply and I get 20 x cubed x squared times 2 10 x squared. But I'm going to subtract. So again that cancels out and 26 minus 10 x squared. 16 x squared Dropping down the 20. X. So from 4X to 16 squared, what do you need? 4X. 4X. Times that out. 4 times 2. 8X. 8X. We are subtracting. So what is 20X minus 8X? Bring down that 5. And the last two. 4x of x. 3. So it'll give me 12x. And then 3 times 2. Thank you for answering the hardest question of the day. 3 times 2 is 6. So now I'm going to subtract. And what am I going to have as my remainder? N negative. One. That means my answer is going to be 4x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x plus 3 plus negative 1 over 4x plus 2. That's a lot of work. Yeah. So this case is where I know that not everybody remembers the rules for some but my gosh, does it save you time if you do. 
do this with synthetic division. Figure out what zero would be. What would your zero, set that equal to zero, what would that give me? Negative. Then it's just a matter of writing those numbers in order, checking if you need placeholders. So 16, 28, 26, 25, and under the last number I draw my box from here. So how do I do substitution? What's your first step? Drop the 16. Then we? Negative one half times sixteen. Negative eight. Then we add them together. So negative one half. Add negative one half. Add negative one half. Add. Well, that's not quite the same thing as what we put here. That's because if you're going to do the synthetic division and you have a number in front, you then have to go through and divide the outside guys by that. But again, 4x cubed, 5x squared, that should be negative, thank you, 4x, 3, and negative 1 over 4x, 2. So, yeah. I get it. You gotta remember some steps. But to me, I'd rather do this any day than have to do that. You understand what I'm talking about? You have half of the work. But it's only if it's linear. It's only if it's linear. But even if I can cut out over half the work on half of the problems, and most of them will be linear, my gosh, I'm gonna do it. That, and that's just my person. All right. One more that is, how about nine? Why did I divide by four? Because when you set that equal to zero, yeah. basically you have the same that you would have had if I set it um, at one to start off with. But there's that multiplier of four to get here. So this, if I divide it by one half, like by just x plus one half, have these answers, okay. but there's a front, so we have to divide by four. So you always use that coefficient. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do one more problem, and we'll do one that does not have a linear divisor. Why, how about this? Let's look at 5x to the fourth minus 4x squared plus 11x minus 18, and I'm dividing that by plus x minus 1. Now, this here is not linear. So you can't make division. Wah, wah, wah. Right? Okay. Because I can do long division. I can do anything you can do better. better. Unless I make a whole bunch of little mistakes. It's the song. I can do anything better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Huh? You said it. I can do anything better. I can do anything you can do better. I can, think, I can do anything that you can do. Yes. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't work, I math. All right, here we go. So as, what number goes on the outside? The bottom one. Then I do the rest of it. But, <coughs> why do you need a space? There is no x. So 5x fourth, no matter what, you need to have, whether you're doing synthetic or 
need to have placeholders. There is no x cubed. So be very, very, that almost always results in an error if you don't catch that first. Trying to divide 150, uh, 1,054, and I left the zero out. You're going to have a different number. So as I work, and again, this into this, what do I need to multiply by? 5x squared. So I'm going to line the other x squared. Multiply. 5x squared x squared, 5x to 5x squared times 5x cubed, good. 5x squared times negative 1. Negative 5x. Okay. And what do you do? Change them to our signs. So minus minus plus. So these go away. What will I have here? Negative 5 cubed. Then I will have x squared. Drop down the 11x. I want to get that negative 5x cubed. So what do I negative 5x. So we're going to times, so I will have negative 5x cubed minus 5x squared plus 5x. Be very careful with those signs. And then change all the signs and combine. Putting down that last term. It started off as negative times a negative is a plus, but then you change all of your signs. So you see the first number was originally negative. What about it? What do I need to multiply x by to get negative 5x cubed? You multiply by negative 5x. Okay. And then let's finish this off. What do I need to multiply by to get this? Just 6. Multiply it. Plus 6x. And then that's going to be minus. But again, change all of those signs. Minus, minus, plus. So basically, I am left with what? Negative, negative what? 12. So then that's going to be plus negative 12 over x squared plus x minus 1. Talking about doing slant asymptotes, again, we're only really interested in Are you okay with our of division? <coughs> Let's get back to graph. We did that so that we can graph. But when we solve problems, what do you always do with problems? Factor! How does my numerator factor? x plus 4, x plus 2. How does my divisor vector? Oh my gosh, we still have to remember factoring. Gasp in awe. Cancel? What do we get when we cancel things? A hole. So that means I have no holes. 
because it cancels. Well, then what's true what's left in here? Asymptotes. What kind of asymptotes? Vertical. So my vertical asymptotes are going to be where? Come on, guys. Zero, negative three. You need a little bit more than that. X equals. X equals equations of lines. So you need to make sure that you write them as equations of lines. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to draw my little asymptotes. Do, 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 do. Draw. I get excited and I want to work ahead. Okay. Then we need to talk about our horizontal asm. What helps me decide whether or not I have asymptotes? The degree. What degree is on top? What degree is on bottom? All right. When the degrees are the same, what's the rule? Coefficient, coefficient. So my horizontal asymptote, it's a line, so it has to be y equals y equals 1, because 1 over 1 is just 1. Now, our goal here is going to be to plot this graph without using a calculator. Dun, dun, dun. And what I want you to start, I want you to start your intercept. How do I find an x-intercept? How, how do you find an x-intercept, guys? Put a zero in for y. How do you find a y-intercept? Put a zero in for x. I personally think the x zero is the easiest one, and then I do the y one. So if I put in for x, plus four, four, zero plus two, four times two, eight times, and then zero plus, uh, times three. So what is eight over zero? That is undefined. There is no y-intercept. Why y-intercept? That's my asymptote. The y-axis is an asymptote, so I'm not going to have an intercept. All right. Now, woohoo! the other one is a lot of candy trick here. This one's not. If I want to solve this or right here, if I were to take 3x over 5 equals, how would you solve that? What would you do first? Times five. Times five. And then right? Okay. So let's use that idea, but this time zero is x plus four, x plus two, over x times x plus three. So how am I going to solve that? Times both by x, x plus That's going to cancel this out. What is zero times anything? Zero. zero. I mean, what will make that zero if I've got x plus four times x plus two? Zero. What do you get? Negative four and negative two. So that means one of negative four. Then I'm going to have another point with negative two. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 0. That doesn't really give me that inf much information. I need more. So I'm going to plot a few points. The way I like to plot a few of points, make sure that I have two dots on either side of my asymptotes. So I'm going to go out one more here. What number x is this? Negative 5. I'm going to go this one. So I have 2 inside. What's this one going to be? 
negative 1. I'm going to go 2 on this side. What's this point? So I'll do 1 and 2. Now we have what we call simplified because it's easier to deal with. Plug these numbers into this. So let's start with negative 5. Negative 5 plus 4, negative 1. Negative 5 plus 2, so negative 1 times negative 3, positive 3. It's going to be negative times negative 5 plus 3. Negative plus 3 is negative 2. And negative 5 times negative, uh, negative 5 times negative is 10. So I'm really glad I did that. I can see now that it actually does come up here. It's a little bit less than half. But with that, I can see where these points go. Because sometimes it does cross over the asymptote. And you want to be careful with that. point. Some of these numbers will be easier to plug in than others. Plugging in negative 1. What's negative 1 plus 4? 3. Negative 1 plus 2? Negative 1 plus 2? 1. So 3 times 1 is? Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 3? So negative 1 times 2. So this is going to go negative down 3 halves. So it's going to be here. The middle ones are always the weirdest. Times the middle ones go up. They look almost like a cube. Sometimes they will go up. Sometimes they will come back. So I want you guys, let's see what you get. I want you to plug in the next. Numbers, see what your coordinate y values are. Can you reduce 24? Yes, you should, but I just was using this as some plot. So 24 over 10 is 2 and 2. But I, to me, I just, again, using it to plot. I'm okay if I'm in unsimplified form over here. That's fine. So what do you think? Right? Tedious, but it shouldn't be like an, oh gosh, where'd my brain go? This is so hard. It's, what is two times three? Six. Yay. Look at the next one. What should you always do? Factor, so do it. Evan. <laughs> the second one? Beat you to it. So obviously the, the top is not going to factor any further. Oops. How does the denominator factor? X minus dx plus 5. So will anything happen with this? What can I do? Cancel out the x minus 3's. So in simplified form, I get 1 over x plus 5. I always want to see if you have simplified form. Oh gosh, does it make plugging numbers so much easier. If it can't, what do we call it? Ah uh -huh. Where's my hole? My hole is where? Tell me something about my hole. That happens when x is 3. And when I plug that into the simplified form, I get 1 over 8. Do you have a question there? Or you just, okay. Couldn't tell if the hand was, yeah. I, could, I couldn't tell. So I'm going to go over 3, teeny weeny, the bit. But what about what doesn't cancel? Careful. X equals negative 5. And what is that? What is that? Vertical. So I'm going to graph it. 
One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five. Whoa. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> like I can't I am horrible with these little lines. But I just don't want. Now you can either look at the original or the simplified. Matter. If I look at the original, what's the degree at the top? One. What's the degree at the bottom? Which one's bigger? Yeah, that's a hard question. Two. Two is bigger than one. Last time I checked. What's the denominator of the bigger C? Then your asymptote is where? Y equals zero. A horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. Why? Because so. Somebody to close that door for me, please. Thank you, Jonah. All right, so now it's just down to. I think the easiest point to find first is zero. Oh, dude, look at the simplified problem. So much simpler. If I plug zero in for x, you get one fifth. Whoop, zero, one fifth. Really hugging that up there. Now, if I set it equal to zero, times both sides by x plus five, what will I have over here? Zero. So when is one equal to zero? Think one equal to none. Never. We have no x, x intercept. I have an x intercept. It's an asymptote. No x intercept because it's an asymptote. All right, so to get some actual good points, here's what I'm going to graph. I'm going to go to my asymptote, and I'm going to go two points on the left, so that's going to be negative 6 and negative 7. I'm going to do two points on the right, so that's going to be 4 and negative 3. Plug those numbers in, what you get. Hint, 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 plug it into the simplified one. What? Why lines? And guys, even though you should get the same, answer, plug it into the original equation. Heck, the original equation has a lot more numbers involved, which means a lot more opportunities for errors. Or with the Simplified. It should be simpler. I know they were really creative when they came up with that term. Right? Mad props to that person. Actually, four more weeks on Mondays because you have Memorial Day. It feels better to say three. That's it. Doesn't help putting your pen link right there. <laughs> Yes, today is Monday. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good <morning. sighs> I really didn't know what they were doing. Happy Monday. Just another manic Monday. Wait, so today doesn't count. I said more. Hey, now. Yeah, that's okay. All right, so let's look at this one. Do first factor. Now, don't need that much, but no matter what, it'll come in. They, the, la, 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 words. There will come a time where it will help me. So, what can I do out of the top? Just x. Plus x is my GCF. So, with four x. Four x minus one. The denominator, well, unfortunately for us, that's 
not going to factor. So, where are my holes? No, you have no holes in this graph. No hole. Nothing cancels, no hole. Try not to fall asleep on me. You're going to start snoring sitting up. Buzz. <coughs> Lovely. Lovely. All right. No holes. What about asymptotes? Where do I find my asymptotes from? What do I do for asymptote? Yeah, so left, 6x squared plus 5, set it equal to 0. Um, what do you need to do to solve for that? Subtract 5 and then divide by 6. x squared is... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Why am I waiting? So negative, what happens when I take the square root of a negative? Imaginary. So that means I have no vertical asymptote. A whole bunch of nothing. It's a weird look. I will tell you that. He's so weird. Uh, degree of the top. Two and the degree of the bottom. Horizontal asymptote is at <laughs> equals two thirds. Everybody understand where the two thirds? Because that's four sticks simplified. So I'm going to grab that graph that lovely. And be prepared for a weird look. Okay. I have to go by. That's it. You know that we always go and what two point what points do we need to find? Y and X intercepts. If I put a in for X, I'm going to go back to the beginning here. Go in for X, what do I get? Zero. And a for X on the bottom, what do you get? So what is zero over five? Zero. So I have the point zero. Woohoo! Point. What is the point? I have a point. Now, to find the other point, the zero in for y. Now, I know that I can just kind of ignore the here. What will solve to work out here? X has to be, what do I get from here? Which I already had. And then what's the other one? One fourth. So zero, zero, and one fourth. I'm going to go over, up. Weird. Up, nothing. Like I said, this is a really weird graph. No? You'll see. We, we really don't know what this is going to look like, right? We're kind of clueless. So let's take a couple of points and just check. So if we go, let's say, let's go two to the left of that, two to the right, and see if that helps me at all. So if I go negative two, negative one, and two. Plug those numbers in. No, seriously, plug them in and see what you get. Don't stare at me. The numbers don't have my face. I know it's beautiful, but control yourself. All right. Not strange at all. What I noticed is I do have, like, this it goes is to the zero, and then they kind of come back up. If you look, these numbers are bigger. And just that I'm not absolutely crazy with this, with this, okay? Got a little thing there. Typed it into my calculator. Ready to see what it looks like? Almost as weird as you. Yeah. Boom! Second grade comebacks. Yeah, buddy. Kind of looks like Brown just went. Beep. 
pushed it a little bit. No, no humor in the moment. Three more Mondays. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> okay. That's that's fine. You'll miss reviews and stuff like that, but that's what you choose. No, I said we'll be fine. What did you think? Oh, I thought you said we'll be gone. Oh, no, I said we'll be fine. Fine is yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Here, we've got, guys, we've got three more graphs. Three whole more graphs. You can do this. You can do this. All right. What are we doing? Factoring. Uh, rut row. Does that factor? No, no. I don't think so. I don't think there are any two numbers that give me negative, give me positive four. All right, so that's that. So no factoring. Any canceling? So I have no. Cancels. But I do have a denominator. So what is that going to be? Ah, vertical or horizontal? At x equals. Plot that. Okay. Here comes the fun part. Horizontal asymptote. What's the degree of the top? Boop. What's the degree of the bottom? Boop. What does that mean? That means I don't have a horizontal asymptote. I have a slant asymptote, and it will be at y equals whatever the heck I get for dividing. So, which would you rather do, synthetic or long? Whatever you want to do, do it. Divide. Remember, for our slant asymptotes, we get to just ignore the remainders. What did you do? Did you get it? All right. Broke it. Ah, here we go. <laughs> He's not working. I hit the wrong freeze. That's okay. All right. Did you get y equals x plus 2 for your slant? Questions on that? Raise your hand if you chose synthetic. What about long? Folks did long. Okay. And it, like, I really don't care what you choose as long as you care. Okay, that right answer part is crucial. Is this format right now? You wrote your hand, hand for long division. No? You were joking? Well, Guy did it, so. <laughs> yep. Guy likes long division. I don't blame him. They're making fun of you for doing long division. It's only 69. Okay. All right, ready? Yep. Here we go. How do I graph that? <laughs> okay. Where does my first point go? 
on 0, 2. Y-intercept of 2. My slope, up 1 over 1. And I'm just going to draw these dots. That'll be my asymptote. I don't need to go crazy. All right, now I need my points. I love doing my y-intercept. It's so sweet. Just put a zero in for x. And when I put a zero in for x, what do I get for my y-intercept? Negative three over two. A gigantic fitting at it repeatedly was your hint. So I'm going to go to zero, negative halves. What is that? One and a half. So right there. And you, you know you love me, right? Your favorite functions trig teacher ever. Right? Okay. Okay. We're just going to do it. <laughs> We're just going to do this. Oh, okay. If I set this equal to zero, Hopefully you guys have figured out that we really are only solving the numerator. You okay with that? So I'm going to have x squared plus x minus equals zero. Does that factor? No. What do you have to do if something doesn't factor? Oh my gosh, what did I say it again? Quadratic formula. Oh, no calculator. What is the quadratic formula? Uh, a, opposite a, negative, 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 negative B. 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 Neg
Negative 1, you can do negative 1, you can do 2. Either of those are fine. Can you give me something on the left side that might help? Okay, negative 9 would be... So if I do 1, I'm going to try negative 3. Plug those numbers and see what you get. If this helps us at all. I'm literally picking, I think if I had a number right here and a number right there, I could figure out what's going on. Because this is going up pretty quick is what it looks like, and then, but I don't know how quick it goes down. That's a very big sigh. So what is negative 1 squared? 1. 4 times negative 1. So 1 minus 4 minus 3. Come on, you can do this. They're all single digit numbers. What is 1 minus 4? Negative 3 minus 3. Okay. And if I plug negative 1 in here, what's negative 1 plus 2? 1. So at negative 1, down at negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I think that's pretty decent to figure out how that's going to work. Do the negative 3. Seriously. So I got negative 6 and positive 6, which helped me draw my graph. They're weird looking graphs. But you're weird looking kids, so you know. <laughs> you know I love you guys. All right, do you have questions on that one? Two more. I'm not going to give you classwork on this because I wanted to get as much practice together as I could. All right. So if I look at this next problem, what should you always do first? It does factor. Okay? That does factor. I want you to see if you guys can run through that whole problem on your own. Because look at what happens. Everything goes away. I factor and it cancels out. Okay, so that gives me a hole. And the hole ends up being at negative 1, negative 1. Plot that puppy. There's no longer any denominator. The degree of the top is one more than the bottom. And you can also do it by looking at the simplified version. Degree of the top is 1. Degree of the bottom is zero. So there's no horizontal asymptote and they say it is a slant asymptote because if you look at the original problem you do divide. Yeah sure you don't get a remainder that's okay. Some people don't consider it an asymptote because a simplified doesn't have a denominator. No matter what when I graph like that line y equals 2x plus 1 and cross an asymptote. You can be asymptote. The definition of asymptote is what does it look like as you go towards infinity. Well, as I go towards another direction, it looks like 2x plus 1 because it is 2x plus 1. There's just that one little spot in the middle where it doesn't work. Questions on that? All right, you have your last problem. I'll give you your homework. I want you guys to do this on your own, but I want you to check your answer with your neighbor. Okay? Here you go. B. The quadratic formula. Look at three. Okay, it's between two. It is. You know, guessed at that to be at about 0.5, maybe a little bit more than 0.5. That was an awesome reaction. What, what was that about? 
Route 3, I'm saying a little bit more than 1 and a half. So negative 1 plus 1 half is about, or it's a little bit um, less. Negative 1 minus root is about 2 and a little more. So I put it there. No. 4 plus 8 is 12. So simple things, they get us. Which means you have to pay attention. Very nice point at 2. It was 2 2. You just like a 2 2. 2 2. Two positive two. Yeah, I got. Okay. It's like, um, that doesn't work. Okay. How do you feel about this? Personally, I think it's tedious. There are so many places, especially the coordinates. It's just, it's just. But sometimes we have to do tedious. Just wait till you get a job. All right, let's step out for an hour. Uh, let's make these. Yay. But necessary. All right.